You're listening to episode 109 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great, too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. I hope you all had a marvelous Thanksgiving with lots of great food. We were a small gathering again this year. Josh came in from New York. Simon came down from Vermont. He's up there in college. And we all met up on Nantucket. Hopefully, we will be back with our extended family next year. But for for this year, it was um, just the four of us. But it was, of course, very delicious. And it was great to be with the boys. So this show, this is a show on winter squash, and it, it is from the archives, but I am bringing it back because my obsession with honey nut, butternut, acorn, spaghetti, delicata squash is still going strong. Plus, I have some very exciting news to share. I'm taking some time this month to rebrand the podcast. So the new show is going to launch in early 2022 with a new focus and a new title. So I want you to be on the lookout on social media and in my e-newsletter for the big reveal, which is coming soon. Now, if you haven't listened to this show on Winter Squash, be sure to stick around. If you already tuned in when the show was first launched three years ago, if you can believe it, you might want to listen in again because I know you will get fresh inspiration. I listened to it again and... um Gosh, I was really surprised at how little I remembered from the first time I I launched this show because, you know, I've done a lot of shows since three years ago. So you're going to be inspired. You're going to get lots of great recipe ideas. So I've got two guests on the show. The first is Katie Morford. She's a fellow dietitian with Mom's Kitchen Handbook. She is author of a book called Prep. It's a cookbook for teenagers and college students. She's been on the show before. So be sure to check out that episode and her cookbook. My other guest is Chef Raymond Ost from Wilson Farms in Lexington, Massachusetts, where I used to live. Now, if you listen to the podcast, you'll know that Tim and I sold our house in Lexington. We moved to a condo in Boston's very cool new seaport neighborhood. So we're now officially city slickers. I miss Wilson's. I miss going there. So um, it was fun again to just, you know, listen in and, and, and hear what Chef Ost had to say about his love of winter squash. Now, we've got lots of tips on the show for how to cut and prep and prepare winter squash. And no, you do not need a machete. We have recipes we're going to share. Spaghetti squash lasagna, honey nut squash roasted and topped with this really savory mixture of cranberry, spinach, and bacon. We're going to talk about delicata squash tacos. So I hope you're hungry because we've got lots of great ideas. And we're going to talk about nutrition just a little bit. Uh, winter squash and the seeds are really nutritious. So um, Katie, she'll talk about that. Anyway, all the resources from today's episode will be at Liz's healthy table.com slash podcast. I will revive and refresh the show notes. So there'll be lots of great resources in there for you. So that's it for now, folks. Sit down, take a walk, go grocery shopping, do what you want to do. Just tune in and enjoy this episode. Hey, Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Hey, before we talk about winter squash, which is really my favorite vegetable this time of year, can you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself? You have such an awesome website. You write cookbooks. Give us a little Katie backstory. So I'm a registered dietitian and a food writer, cookbook author. I have a blog called Mom's Kitchen Handbook, Raising Fresh Food Kids in a French Fried World. And I'm about to come out with my third cookbook, which comes out this spring, and it's called Prep, and it's for teenagers and college students. And you'll be back on the show. I hope so. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. 
But I wanted to have you on now because I'm doing this winter squash show. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about nutrition, but also to just get some insight from you as this really great seasoned cook, just about sort of how to manage and handle winter squash, because I think it intimidates some people. But just give us sort of the nutrition 101. I mean, it's so deep and vibrant in color in general, winter squash. So it's got to be nutritious, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, across the board, I mean, there's a number of varieties of winter squash, but generally speaking, they tend to be really high in beta carotene, which is that precursor to vitamin A. They're also rich in vitamin C and fiber. Those are sort of the biggies. And then magnesium and potassium as well. And the other thing that oftentimes we don't think about are the seeds. So if you clean and roast those seeds, you're also getting a nutrient-dense food. Those are rich in fiber. You've got some protein in there. You've got some magnesium in there. So yes, across the board, super nutritious food. So if you have acorn squash versus say spaghetti squash, because spaghetti squash is very pale in color. Acorn squash is really deep orange in color. Would you say the acorn squash is healthier than the, you know, the spaghetti squash? Well, that's a really good point. I think You know, most of the squash are, as I described, you know, acorn squash is high in beta carotene. It's also really rich in fiber. And, you know, spaghetti squash is the one squash, and you point out the fact that it's pale in color. It's the one squash that isn't as nutrient dense as some of the others. However, it is also much lower in calories. So there are trade-offs. And you can top it with just about anything, which is something I love to do. Absolutely. Yeah, you could kind of bake it, shred it up, and then you can add all sorts of toppings. I don't know if you have a spaghetti squash recipe. Oh, you do have a spaghetti squash recipe on your website because it's a spaghetti squash lasagna, which looks so killer, so good. Tell us about that recipe. So it is one of my most popular recipes. It comes to me by way of the foodie physician who is a blogger. And it has all the flavors that, you know, we love in a lasagna. It's got the tomato sauce and the ricotta and the mozzarella and the spinach. But rather than being built on a foundation of pasta, it's built on a foundation of spaghetti squash, which means that it's much lighter on the appetite. It's lower in calories. And it's sort of the perfect dish to serve, say, someone who might be gluten free or vegetarian. And at the same time, it tends to sort of pass muster with the kids. Now, when I am cooking with spaghetti squash, I always will zap it for maybe two or three minutes in the microwave. I poke a few holes in it first. I Mm -hmm. soften it up just a little bit and then I slice it. And then I'm able to sort of scoop things out and, you know, add a little olive oil and get it ready for cooking. But like, what do you do with spaghetti squash when it's so rock hard? It's really scary for people to slice these things in half. So are you one of these people who also will use the microwave to soften things up a little bit? Yeah, I think that's a great tip, not just for spaghetti squash, but for all of these hard winter squash. You know, oftentimes they're very awkwardly shaped. They're big, they're hard, particularly for someone who might not be as strong or have really good knives. Poking a few holes and, as you say, putting it in the microwave for a couple of minutes is a great way to you know, make it easier to work with and even easier to peel if you're going to, say, peel a butternut squash. I think that's a great tip. The other thing you can do, if you're going to be using a squash, let's say a kabocha squash or a pumpkin or a butternut squash, I have done where I just poke a few holes because you want to have those holes to release any steam. Otherwise, it'll break apart. So I'll poke a few holes into an entire squash and then just stick it in the oven hole at like 400 degrees, basically until it grows super tender. And then you can just half it and scoop the seeds out and then scoop out all that flesh. So for example, if you're going to turn a a butternut squash into a pureed butternut squash soup, that's a really easy way to go about it. Oh, I like this idea. Versus say you're going to slice up an acorn squash or maybe cut it in half, put it upside down, roast it, and then stuff it with something. So that's where maybe the microwaving comes in. But then if you're going to puree it, why not just roast the whole thing and then kind of handle it after? 
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I like that tip. Yeah. Now, you've got a yeah. recipe on your website for delicata squash tacos. I love delicata squash because that is probably the easiest one to cook. Tell everybody about that recipe. So I too love the delicata squash. So these guys are much smaller than some of the other squash. They're oblong in shape and they have a very thin skin, which means you can eat both flesh and skin. So, you know, no peeling necessary. And what I do with that is I have them lengthwise, cut them into half moons and then roast the delicata squash and then I, while those are roasting, I make a quick pickled onion. You know, sometimes people think pickling is a really big deal, but you can do a very quick pickle by just slicing onions and macerating them with a little sugar and a little salt. And then I pile those beautiful caramelized roasted butternut squash half moons onto corn tortillas with your pickled onion, a little salsa. And then I like to use cotija, which is a traditional crumbly Mexican cheese, but you could also use something like feta or goat cheese, something kind of salty and crumbly. And it's a delicious main dish for dinner. And again, vegetarian. Yeah. And I think you have butternut squash on the brain because you said use butternut squash. (laughs) But everybody, she's roasting delicata, but you probably could use butternut squash. Yes, you could. Absolutely. You could. The delicata is nice because it's easy to work with and it cooks quite quickly and you can eat that skin. My mother is so funny. She will not even eat the skin on the delicata. I said, mom, you can eat the skin. But she's like, no, no, it has to be peeled. I'm like, okay, whatever. But it is. It's so good. And it's so fun. And I feel like for kids who might be reluctant to eat winter squash, and remember, people, there's like so many to choose from. But for kids who might shy away, I feel like delicata might be sort of that gateway to kind of get them into the squash world. What do you think? I think that that's a good idea. And I even tried something the other night. I sliced them as I described, sort of those half moons, and I did them in my air fryer. And we had them with ketchup. They were just like these crunchy little sort of like, quote unquote, butter, I mean, delicata squash fries. <laughs> you <So>. just <laughs> <laughs> What is happening to you? You've got this butternut squash thing. Get it out of your well, head. Well, it's because I made an enormous vat of butternut squash soup for Thanksgiving and I'm, we're still eating it. So I think that's why. Okay, that I'm going to give you a buy on that one. Well, you know, it's <laughs> funny you mentioned that you made these delicata squash kind of chips in the air fryer. I do not own an air fryer, but I want everyone to know that the show after this one, I'm having Dana Angela White on the show, and she has written the Healthy Air Fryer Cookbook. So we're going to be talking about air fryers, and I'm super excited about that. But, you know, I have a lot of gadgets. I got the Instant Pot. I got the slow yeah. cooker. I don't have an air fryer. Yeah, well, I'll look forward to that episode, too, because I'm just learning how to use it myself. Ah, it's new for you as well. Yeah, I think there's people out there who are definite groupies. So anything else about squash, Katie, that you want to share, you know, that maybe a favorite recipe or just a squash type that might be a little unexpected that people might want to try? Well, I think I have a couple of thoughts. One thought, and you sort of mentioned this, but I mean, the thing about all of these squash, they're so versatile and you can really play and sort of have fun with them in the kitchen. And both the delicata squash and the acorn squash, you know, these are sort of littler squash that are great for having and filling and roasting almost like as its own little, you know, it's like a little veggie boat. And that's a really beautiful preparation. So that's one idea I have. And the other thing is I like to add, you know, cubed butternut squash or other cubed squash to chili. I think that's a great sort of gateway to get these really nutritious vegetables, particularly into the diet of younger kids who might be a little bit sort of late to come to the veggie um, train. Mm -hmm. So if you dice up butternut squash or delicata squash, and put it into your chili, those sort of spicy flavors go really well with the sweetness of the squash. So those are two of my kind of go-tos as well. Yeah. So make it playful and fun with these little boats Mm -hmm. or bowls. And then... Mm Add that roasted squash to, because chili is one of those recipes that kids seem to love because they can kind yeah. of pile it high with cheese and guacamole and sour cream and whatever. And so it's a little more kind of, I guess, uh, customizable for kids, which is why I think they love it so much. I agree. Yeah, I think it's great. 
Well, good stuff. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your butternut squash soup because I know that you (laughs) will want to finish your leftovers. And thanks, Katie. And we'll look forward to having you on when prep comes out in the spring. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Chef Ost, welcome back to the show. Hello. How are you, Liz? I'm good. Nice to be here. Yeah. You know, I've been roasting honey nut squash all afternoon in preparation for this interview. And my house smells great. I love squash. I'm so happy. Wonderful. So I think one of the most popular types of squash that's really come onto the market in the last couple of years is this delicata squash. And I was uh, Mm -hmm. visiting my parents the other day and I said to my mom, you know, you can eat the skin on the delicata. And I don't think people realize that. And I always like to just slice it in half lengthwise, scoop out the seeds, and then I'll either roast it whole or I will slice it into these little half moon rounds yes. almost. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then just put it flat on a baking sheet, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and just bake it. And then yes. I could, you could eat it as is. You could add it to salads. Like what would you do with delicata squash? What would be one of like your favorite things to do? It's small enough, so I would stuff it cut it in half, roast it, and then make a stuffing with it, you know, vegetable stuffing, like a ratatouille, but a very small diced or something like that, and then put it in. Mm -hmm. Or also, you know, stuff it with the sage and the caramelized onion, you know, that I have here, the recipe. I hear you ruffling your paper. So I'll put a link to that one for sure in my show notes. But tell everybody about that recipe that you've got on your website for delicata squash stuffed with onion and panko. Tell everybody about that. Yeah, yeah. So you just take the squash and you cut it in half, you know, remove the seeds. And then you have some diced onion and chopped chestnuts with sage, you know. So what you do is you rub the squash with some butter, sprinkle it with salt and pepper and place it on a sheet pan, then roast it in the oven until it's golden brown, about 30, 35 minutes. Then you put in a pan, you know, a little bit of butter and saute the onions until golden brown and then add the sage and uh, sprinkle with a little bit salt and pepper, you know. Add that together with breadcrumbs, chestnut, you know, the chestnut, you can leave them whole because some people like them whole or whatever, or then you uh, break them apart and then add that to it like a crumble, basically. A crumble. What if you don't have chestnuts? You know, I mean, chestnuts are perfect around the holidays, but could you use maybe pecans or something like that? Chopped pecans if you don't have chestnuts? Yeah, it's a little rough, you know, for the, it'll be a little crispy, but it, that's fine too, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can add pecans, you can add hazelnuts or, you know, any kind of nuts if you'd like. But you need to chop them up so it's not like it's uh, big pieces in there. Mm-hmm. So that the chestnut, what's good about that is that they soft, so they're not hard. So when you put them in there, it makes it, uh, you know, when you eat it with the, butter, uh, with the delicata squash, it makes it the same consistency. So there's no crispiness to it. You, right, know? Right. you, don't, you don't want it to be too crispy. Makes because sense, it's, yeah. You know, and then bake that in the oven and for 12 more minutes, warm up the whole thing and then serve it like that. You know, with a little bit, maybe a lemon juice on it, you know, a fresh lemon a sprinkle on it or something like that. That would be good. You know, I love squash because it is so versatile and because you can buy it and leave it on your counter and you don't have to get to it right away. So I feel like even when it comes to food waste, you know, when people buy fresh yes, produce, uh, oftentimes they waste because they yes, don't get to uh, it. Yeah. What is like the shelf life of squash? I mean, how long can it kind of sit there? If you leave them outside, you know, not in the very, very cold weather, but if you leave it outside or in your cellar, It'll keep up at two, three months if you don't touch it, you know. So it's there to be kept for a long time to be eaten whenever you need it. I think people, though, are intimidated by the winter squash because it can be hard to slice open or handle. Oh, it's hard, yes. Yeah, yeah. like so today I was playing around with this honey nut squash, which is just like this. Yes. It almost looks like little miniature butternut yeah, butter squash. Nuts. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Super cute. And... I read somewhere that Dan Barber, who is the chef at Blue Hill Farm in New York, kind of popularized the honey nut. And so, you know, I sliced it in half. But when it comes to slicing through the stem, what I do is I don't slice all the way through. I sort of slice down one half. I slice down the other. And then I sort of twist it almost. And you twist it and then it opens up because you can't cut through a woody stem. 
No, unless you have a good knife. <laughs> yeah, which most people, you know, I feel don't like, have. <laughs> yeah, you need like a machete. You got to like yeah, exactly. chop that thing. So what do you, you do? Know, like, I, you know, I go to the store and I'm super lazy. I'll buy the butternut squash already peeled and cubed. And I feel like you can find that everywhere now. Yeah, but you can use the honey nut squash the same way as a butternut. You know, it's a great, great, sweet and nutty squash to play with. And then you can also do it, you know, like I did before with the delicata, but do another stuffing or do another preparation and just do it with a little bit of Roquefort cheese crumbled, you know, and make it special and just bake that Roquefort cheese on top of the whole honey nut squash. Yeah, I feel like it's really conducive to sort of being stuffed. And yes. I went to your website and I did roast some honey nut squash. You know, I, was, yeah. I do it the cut side down and you had me add a little brown sugar and salt and pepper. And then while that was roasting, I just sauteed up garlic and onion. And then I added some whole cranberries. And so this is like a very holiday-ish recipe. Yes. And then I added some three spinach s- leaves spinach and, leaves and some yeah. crumbled bacon, yep. which I bought at the farm. And I actually added some pumpkin pie spice. Because I'm not like a huge nutmeg fan, so and I'm yeah. lazy too, right? I just said I was lazy. I like to <laughs> it's all there, it's all together. Add exactly. a little bit of that, salt and pepper, and I used feta cheese because that's what I had on hand. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. But it was so cute because you just stuff the little there's like a little cavity in the honey nut. Exactly. And you just stuff them and then you yeah. top with the cheese and that honey nut squash is so sweet. Yeah, exactly. You can also use I wanna mention that is a uh, goat cheese. Mm. which will be very, very good with it too, you know, with that spinach and the stuffing that you do with a little bit of bacon and everything that tastes very good too. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's funny, last year or the year before, I went through this obsession with spaghetti squash because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you're eating a meal out of a bowl. Of course, yes. you don't want to eat the, the skin, skin on that. Yeah, no way. But the course. skin is like yeah. a bowl. Yeah. And it's so mild, but it really is kind of conducive to adding other things. You know, once yep. you kind of r- bake it and shred it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the sky's the limit. Like, what would you do if you had roasted spaghetti squash? What might you top that with? Oh, I would do it like, a, you know, dice little vegetables with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And saute those vegetables and add a little bit of tomato sauce with it. Like a spaghetti bolognese, but vegetarian one. Mm, yeah. You know, and then top it with some goat cheese, and that would be so good. You like goat it cheese. Is. <laughs> I love goat cheese. You know, it depends which one, but I do like goat cheese. Yes. I think goat cheese, though, is a love hate thing. Some people really hate it. Yeah. I love exactly. it. Exactly. I agree with you. Some people hate it very much. Yeah. It's like cilantro. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, so I hate cilantro. You <gasps> see? You that's do? The, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry I like to hear the, that. The, no, that's okay. <laughs> I like the coriander, the powder, you know, the, yeah, yeah. once you take the, the, the dry grain, stuff, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you blend it, and the powder is less obtrusive than the fresh coriander. Mm-hmm. But some people, uh, for me, it tastes like soap a little bit. So That's what they say. And yeah. I, meanwhile, I could eat cilantro like it's a lettuce leaf. I mean, I love it. And That's wonderful. You it's know, like so. a 50-50. I'd say exactly. half the population is like, eh, no way, I don't like that. Yeah. So let's say you're a parent and you yeah. come into Wilson Farm and you've got you know three little kids in tow and you're thinking, there's no way I'm going to get my kids to eat squash. Yeah. What's the first type of squash that you would tell that mom or dad or caregiver to try? And what type of recipe or preparation do you think would be sort of a good introduction to to squash? Well, I would do the butternut squash, you know, or the pumpkin. Butternut squash has more taste. But instead of doing just the butternut squash, I would blanch it Mm -hmm. and then puree it. But I would add a little bit of potatoes with that. You boil a potato with the skin and then you peel that potato and then you use that meat of that potato and you mix it together with the butternut squash and add a little bit of butter and cream and just, you know, whip it up. I guarantee you, every kid will eat that. So it's like mashed potatoes, but you yeah, add some squash. Butternut. Yeah, but you add more butternut squash than the potato. So it's nice and orange, but the potato gives that smooth, smooth flavor. And the kid is not going to recognize it, but he's going to say, oh, my God, that's good. Because mm-hmm. the potato makes the butternut smooth. You know, when you steam a butternut squash, it's a little rough. 
you know, because it's uh, stringy. It's uh, how can I say, you know, it's not smooth. So it has water and everything else. So it looks a little ugly if you want in the plate when you eat it just like that. But if you whip it up with a little bit of potato and butter, or if you don't like butter, olive oil or whatever, you know, whatever makes you happy, I guarantee you the kids will eat that with no problem whatsoever. Mm. Or... There is also the sweet, uh, you know, pumpkin, the sweet pumpkin. You take that, you roast that, and you put a little honey on it, and you have them taste that just like that. Kids will love that. Years ago, I was taking these little sugar pumpkins, and I was yes. uh-huh. hollowing them out, and then yep. stuffing them with like almost like a stuffing maybe with um, bread and sausage and cranberries, oh, yeah, and I was yeah. roasting the whole thing, so it was like this stuffed pumpkin. Yeah, that was, would have looked good, no? That was fun. Yeah, yeah. it tasted really good. Yeah, and then yeah. the other thing I love to do is really just to buy that butternut squash already cubed yeah. up, and yeah. then just toss it with olive oil and salt and pepper and just roast exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like You're, any other vegetable. Yeah, you know, there is another one, those little green squash. Oh, I can, acorn. Uh, Acorn squash, yes. (laughs) Yes. Sorry. (laughs) Those acorn squash, if you cut the top and you blanch them and then roast them in the oven and then make a soup with butternut squash and fill this up with it, I guarantee you the kids will eat your soup in that acorn squash. And then is the acorn squash soft enough that you can? Yes. Yeah, you can scoop it out. Yeah. Oh, that would be really fun. So the soup served in that and then the squash soft inside with the soup and uh, maybe some crouton or some cheese or whatever. I guarantee you they'll like it. Mm -hmm. They'll like that too. That sounds really good. I just love the versatility of squash, the fact that you can stuff it. You can put it in a salad. You can make a soup with it. You can just eat it as is. To me, you know, makes it very interesting. And actually, when I was at the farm recently, I saw white acorn squash. They were so very mild in flavor. I didn't like them as much as the regular. Oh, you didn't? I love them. They love them better than the other ones. Really? They're so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I roasted them just plain with salt and pepper and a little butter. I'm sorry, I use butter everywhere. But you, you do, know. you do. Um, uh, hey, I'm not judging you. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just a dietitian here. What could I tell you? I'm like, what the heck? Enough exactly. with the butter. I'm sure you must say that once in a while. I do, I do. Well, I tend to go more for the olive oil, but yes, I yes, think, I you know, olive yes. oil or butter, I think is great. So you liked the white acorn yes. squash. Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah. that interesting? Yeah, because it was more uh, rugous, you know, uh, more uh, meaty. Mm. Oh, just you the know, texture, yeah. Yes, yeah. the texture was so, so different from the normal squash. And it tasted like a, you know, a rough potato, but it was uh, roasted. It was actually very, very mm-hmm. good. I was surprised. I never saw the white acorn squash before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, I it... also do a salad with the squash if you'd like. What kind of salad? What would you do with this? Like a, a red quinoa, you know, pilaf. You just boil the pilaf. And then you take some uh, some squash with a leek and mix it together with a dressing, whatever dressing you like, you know. You take the squash, whatever you want, the rogusa squash, butternut squash. You dice it in small pieces. Just so it's... Toss it with a little bit of olive oil, roast it in the oven until it's soft. And then you take some leeks, you know, mince it up a little bit. Uh, instead of onion and all that stuff, leeks is a very, very great uh, vegetables for that. And then you just saute the leek in a little bit of olive oil, cool everything down, and then mix it together with the uh, red quinoa. And then add maybe some red wine vinegar, you know, make a dressing with the mustard, the red wine vinegar or whatever, and then toss the whole thing together. Uh, that will be very good too. Mm, I want to throw an herb in there. What do you think? Parsley, maybe? What would you put in there? Oh, yeah. I would I would put parsley in there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm yeah. feeling cranberries, too, like dried cranberries. I feel like this time of year yeah, you is can perfect for that. Sure, oh, that yeah. sounds really good. Or you can do diced pears, you know, fresh pears. That could be even better or sliced as a decoration, you know, like, you know, when you make the presentation. That could be good. That sounds really good. And even like pears, I think, and butternut squash, like if you do a soup, a pear yeah. and butternut squash soup, that would be nice too. That would too. be good. Yeah, it's very seasonal and very nice, yeah. You're going to have to come over to my house and cook dinner for me sometime. I will invite you anytime. Yeah, if you have a good <laughs> wine, just let me know. I'll come right away. 
Oh, okay. Now I know. That's the deal. All right. (laughs) That is our official deal. All right. We will be in touch on the dinner and the wine swap. I love it. I love it. Definitely. Well, I'm going to go back to my kitchen and clean up after the horrific mess I made this afternoon cooking up that honey nut squash and taking photos. This is why my kitchen is a mess because I'm photographing as I'm cooking and then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's two o'clock. I got to go talk to chef. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and clean my kitchen. Well, but I hope you had a good fun with it. I loved it. I love the recipe, and I'm going to share it on the blog. So everybody, oh, nice. you know. Yeah, yeah, can see it. Uh-huh. We'll have show notes for everybody and then yep. links to Wilson Farms, and then I will do a blog post for this recipe oh, so everybody nice. can give it a yeah, try. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. And then maybe we'll have you back in the spring when we've got some fabulous things growing again here in New England. We're going to be yes. covered in snow before you know it. Oh, my God. Yeah. You heard that maybe next week we have snow or something like that. That's right. And it's getting very cold out. So <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we're about to go into hibernation here in New England. But <laughs> as soon as the snow melts in the spring, we'll have you yeah. back on and we'll come up with something really fun for spring. That would be great. All I'm right. very happy. I'm honored to be on your website. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Have a great day. You too. All right. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table. I hope you loved all of our winter squash wisdom. Don't forget to check out the show notes from today's show over at Liz's Healthy Table slash podcast. If you love the show, post a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio or wherever you get your podcasts. Tell your friends about it and don't hesitate to get in touch with me anytime. If you've got a question, a comment, just want to get in touch, my email is Liz at Liz's Healthy Table.com. Until next time, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table.